Today we are going to be taking a look at least common multiples. Make sure you are following along and filling in your notes as we go. So least common multiple or LCM is a way that it's often abbreviated is the smallest multiple that two or more numbers share or have in common, right? So it's something that we are looking for that is the same. Most often we use this in finding common denominators because when we're finding a common denominator, we're really just finding a common multiple between our two denominators. The other thing that often comes up that people forget um, and they confuse multiples versus factors. And remember, multiples are infinite and are going to keep going. So that's why we're finding the smallest common multiple because realistically we could continually find more common multiples as we keep going. Kind of like when we did greatest common factor, we are going to look at three different ways that we can find the least common multiple of two or more numbers. And the example we're going to kind of center around is this. Riley, Josh, and Gavin are biking around a pond, and they all start together, but Josh finishes a lap every 6 seconds, Riley finishes every 15 seconds, and Gavin finishes a lap every 24 seconds. What is the least amount of time I will have to wait for them all to be at the starting line at the same time? We're going to start with the list method. When I do the list method for this example, I'm just going to do two numbers, but you could do it with three numbers just by adding in the third one. The list method is exactly like it sounds. What I'm going to do is you could either take a multiplication table um, or a calculator, and we're just going to list out the multiples of our numbers that we're looking for. So in this case, 6 and 15. Now don't forget that the first multiple of each number is that number itself. So the first multiple of 6 is 6 because 1 times 6 is 6. And then we're just going to go 6 times 2 is 12, times 3 is 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48. Now one thing with the list method is sometimes it's really easy to miss numbers um, and sometimes you don't know how far you have to go. So I would kind of just guess how far you have to go, keeping in mind that we could keep going. Now I'm going to do the same thing with 15. So I have 15 and then I have 30. Now here I can actually stop already and the reason why is I can already see that 6 and 15 are going to share a common multiple of 30 and it's the first number that they have in common. So the least common multiple is going to equal 30. In this context of this problem, it would mean 30 seconds before I would at least see um, Josh and Riley back at the starting line again. Let's look at a second strategy. Now, the list strategy is super um, common that people will use it. Um, it's nice because it's pretty straightforward. The biggest problem I see is that people miss some of the multiples as they're going. The second strategy we're going to look at is the prime factorization strategy. Um, and we're going to do this for 6 and 15 again. So I'm going to take 6 and do its prime factorization. So 6 breaks into 2 and 3. And I'm actually going to add in the 24 here just to show you what that looks like. 15's prime factorization is 3 times 5. And then when I look at 24, multiple ways I can start, I'm going to do 2 times 12. 12 is 2 times 6. And then 6 is 2 times 3. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to list my three numbers. And I'm going to write out their prime factorizations um, without using exponents. So 6 was 2 times 3. 15 was 3 times 5. And 24 
is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Now, one thing I'll see happen is people will go through and they'll circle and say, hey, look, they all have a 3. And they'll think in terms of greatest common factor and they'll give me an answer of 3. 3 is the smallest, is the factor that they have in common, but we're looking for a multiple. We're always going to start with, when we have three numbers, what do all three have in common? So in this case, they all have a 3. So their least common multiple is going to start with that 3. The thing that's different about multiples and factors is when we do least common multiple, it actually only has to be shared by two of the numbers. Unlike with factors, it had to be shared among all three. So first we're going to look for anything that's shared by all three and circle that. And now we're going to look for anything that's shared by just two of the numbers. So now I can see that 6 and 24 share a 2. So I'm going to include that. Now here's the, another place where I'll see students make mistakes, is they'll see the two twos here and they'll circle those. But because these are side by side and not vertical, because they're included in the 24, we can't circle those. Now what we're going to do is kind of like if you think about least common multiple, we need to include the leftovers. Um, we're going to include any of the numbers that haven't been circled already. So in this case we have a 5, a 2, and a 2. And now we're going to multiply all of these numbers. Um, what I would tend to do is think in terms of uh, mental math. I know that 2 times 5 is 10, so I would start with that. 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. So I'm going to really have 12 times 10 when I simplify this. So the least common multiple of the three numbers is going to be 120. I could make this even better by adding in that label that it would be 120 seconds before I would see all three of my kids at the starting line at the same time. So that was prime factorization. Now I'm going to do the same thing again, but with the cake strategy or that ladder strategy. Remember with this, I'm going to start with all three numbers on that step or that layer. And just like with GCF, I'm going to look for something that all three have in common. Um, so in this case, 6, 15, and 24 all do have something in common. But like I said, if you didn't recognize something that all three had in common, for least common multiple, as long as just two of them have a number in common, you could start there too. So what if I looked at this and I just said, oh, well, I know that 6 and 24 are both even. So I'm going to start just by doing a 2 on the outside. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 15 can't be divided by 2, so I'm just going to bring that 15 down. 24 divided by 2 is 12. Then I might look, and now I might say, oh, I know all of these can be divided by 3, or have 3 as a factor. So I'm going to put 3 on the outside. I'm going to do that same thing again. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So now when I look, I see that 1, 5, and 4 don't have any other common factors. So I'm going to bring out a 1, and then I'm going to go through... And I'm going to bring those numbers down. Greatest common factor, we only focused on the numbers out here. Kind of like over with the prime factorization, we have to include the leftovers. Because we're doing multiples, we have to include all factors of our numbers. So here, we're going to also include those. What I like to remind students to do is we're going to make an L for least common multiple. So now my least common multiple is going to be 2 times 3. 
You can include the ones if you want, but remember they're not going to change the value. Times 5 times 4. So here I could simplify this as to 6 times 20. And 6 times 20, once again, would be 120 seconds. So that was three different strategies for finding least common multiple. Um, I encourage you to try all of them because sometimes it's nice to be able to practice um, and justify your answers, but these are some of the different strategies that you can use.